yeah so I've got a piece ready to go in but to get the angles all I've done is used a piece of paper uh, with a hard board behind it pushed it up against just drawn a couple of pencil lines to get the angle and then you just line that up with the straight edge of the board and you can see that's how I've got the angle and the cutting so you don't have to mess around, it's the simplest way to do it I think so that's going to go in there now into this area a run off section for the HOE yard it's going to be extended right so got that piece in, it's nearly in it's not perfect but all those little gaps can be filled in there along the edge and this lip here acts for putting bushes, fencing on whatever, walls it's loft flooring so it's exactly the same as what I've used throughout the attic um, I've just held it in place on the main frame system put a batten there batten there, batten going all the way along there and a reinforcing batten underneath there so there's quite a few screws holding it together and it is really solid now it doesn't need a leg which is the idea of that uh, now what I've used throughout the construction of my attic is obviously loft flooring and that's what I've used for the main layout construction because it interlinks together slots together and you can just add on modules like obviously there's one module I did last year and now I'm adding on to it so that can join the main system now or the HOE yard can come up through here so a bigger storage yard I can do whatever so but it does enable this area here which is completely separate to the layout but has got power to be uh, brought onto the main system now and the screws I've used <coughs> which I highly recommend are called Turbo Ultra Stainless Steel uh, they're, very, they're quite expensive, a lot more dear than your normal screws but they never rust and they're extremely tough when screwing into uh, wood you've got like a, a razor sharp tip there a specially designed tip I don't know if you can see that, let's see if we can focus in on it it's a razor sharp tip anyway and it's got a special like end chamfered end on it, it's like a it really is fantastic screws and I've used about possibly around 1800 of these screws in the construction of my attic various different sizes, these are the, you know, like the ones I've used for the construction of the uh, baseboards and there for screwing into uh, securing the baseboard to the mainframe underneath and uh, the self counter sinking as well which is good See those lines going across around underneath? Well, they, uh, they countersink themselves automatically when you screw them in. But you do need a decent uh, driver for driving in, pilot holes, etc. And a big heavy duty uh, drill for the bigger ones, something like that. And of course, I use a Makita uh, quick adjust, quick selectable. Pilot drill, that's a, that's a pilot in uh, drill and counter sinker, and then there's the bit they use for doing all the work, and that just swaps around, locks in position. So you could have one of them on two drills, and it makes it speeds up the job a whole lot quicker. So, anyway, another quick look at these screws. I'll take a picture of these just to. Yeah, so that's everything completely level with the existing baseboard, access to the tunnel, that can slide out. Um, 
That's I think she's perfect now. It's nice and solid. So that's the next part is adding track, etc., filling it. Yeah, so I'm just scoring the expansion gaps in the concrete or measured measured intervals uh, using a steel blade, a brand new uh, Stanley blade knife, and a long steel blade as well for getting long lines in. And you can see you can just add that sort of uh, concrete effect. Obviously, this section here has had the paint base coat on and sprinkled fine uh, sandy sort of gravel. Um, through a sieve while the paint's wet let it dry hoover off put a top coat on and it'll look like that which I think is a pretty good uh, concrete effect and that's all done out of about 3mm balsa wood which is easy to cut by the way this is going off the subject but uh, anyone who's got any flashman or uh, continental models and they want spare parts I've just bought some spare parts from this guy uh, called Lockdock from Germany off eBay and I bought some parts from a model that's 20 years old which is my uh, British Rail Fleischmann model uh, traction tyres so this come really fast so really impressed with this I love the packaging as well you've got one of these little brass studs with the wings on the back Really cool. <laughs> yeah, so I've, as I've shown in, in my other videos in the past, um, just scribe, I've just put the finishing top coat on, which is still drying, and this time I've used a slightly lighter colour to simulate a, a lighter coloured concrete, so there's a bit of a break because it's a bit too grey. It was blending in too much of the mounds, it looked too grey everywhere, so I've gone for this lighter colour. Um, so I pre scribed the holes, the expansion gaps I mean, and now I'm going over them again uh, just to highlight them, and then that'll be it then. I put everything back in on this area, and then at a later date, I'll have the choice of linking all that into the main system. But for now, the HOE is staying, which is a narrow gauge. That is staying. I'm not getting rid of that because my girls, it's their railway really and I can't take it up. Yeah, so these lines which I'm doing now, I've gone over them. This is the fourth time I've gone over them and it, ex it sh just um, brings them out and highlights them more. And you can sort of run a bit of a jagged blade at an angle and it chips chip certain areas to make them look more realistic. Uh, to do this I'm using a meter rule and a, sh a short steel rule as well, both of them metal and obviously you just measure them out to whatever distances you want to look, make them look uniform and a bright light on this stage is good because it highlights these areas so you can run the blade down there that looks realistic.